Dear Chairman of the Linnaeus Ecotec Conference, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have been invited to speak at this year's Linnaeus Ecotec Conference, the 13th of its kind. As a representative of HELCOM, which is a true pioneer in international cooperation in marine environmental protection, I'm deeply convinced that working together across borders is always beneficial, and perhaps more so today than ever before. This is of course true, not only for cooperation at the government level, but equally so when it comes to international cooperation between companies and institutions, as in the case of this conference. As requested, my presentation today will be focused on the Baltic Sea in a historical perspective, the situation today, and a prognosis for the future. Let me begin by providing some key facts about the Baltic Sea. The Baltic is a semi-enclosed sea. It is relatively shallow, with brackish waters that are low in oxygen. In addition to some true brackish water species, it is inhabited by a unique community of marine and freshwater species, many of which have adapted specifically to the conditions in the Baltic Sea. As there are only about 3,000 macroscopic species in the Baltic Sea, each has an exceptionally high importance within the food web. The disappearance of a single key species could have dire consequences for the entire ecosystem, possibly even leading to its collapse. For this reason, the Baltic Sea is considered particularly vulnerable to external pressures, of which, regrettably, there is no lack. The catchment area, which hosts about 85 million people, is four times larger than the sea itself. Human activities abound in this busy region, and so do anthropogenic pressures. Agriculture, fishing, industry, shipping, and urban development have taken a serious toll on the marine environment in the past. However, almost 50 years ago, in 1974, all the countries around the Baltic Sea signed the Helsinki Convention which was a milestone achievement in starting to seriously tackle the severe impacts of human activities on the marine environment. The Helsinki Convention aims to protect the Baltic Sea from all sources of pollution from land, air, and sea. In 1992, the convention was updated to take into account the geopolitical changes and emerging environmental challenges in the region. The Baltic Marine Environment Protection Commission, also known as the Helsinki Commission or indeed HELCOM, oversees the implementation of this convention. HELCOM consists of 10 contracting parties, the nine Baltic Sea coastal states, as well as the EU. A platform for environmental policy making at the regional level, HELCOM works for a healthy Baltic Sea with regard to many issues and in multiple ways. However, despite considerable efforts by all HELCOM countries, the Baltic Sea has not fully recovered and is not yet showing good environmental status. One of the key instruments of HELCOM work is the 2021 Baltic Sea Action Plan, or BSAP, a strategic program of action first launched in 2007 and fully updated last year. Let's watch a short introductory video about the new action plan. The ecological state of the Baltic Sea has improved since the 1980s when pollution peaked, but our sea remains under heavy stress. For a healthy Baltic Sea, we still need to do more. The HELCOM Baltic Sea Action Plan, or BSAP, is one of the key tools at our disposal for making our sea healthy again, achieving good ecological status. Initially adopted in 2007 and updated in 2021 by all Baltic Sea countries and the European Union, the BSAP contains about 200 measures and actions for a healthy marine environment. The BSAP covers four segments, biodiversity, eutrophication, hazardous substances and marine litter, and sea-based activities. On biodiversity, with its objective of a Baltic Sea ecosystem that is healthy and resilient, the BSAP seeks to ensure that all native species and habitats are in good health and can thrive in the Baltic, and that they are not disturbed by human activities. Eutrophication is the major environmental threat to the Baltic Sea. It is fueled by excessive concentrations of nutrients, originating from sources such as agriculture or wastewater. 
The results are intense algal growth and depletion of our sea's oxygen choking marine life. Clear waters, natural levels of algal blooms and natural oxygen levels. That's what the BSAP seeks to achieve under its objective of a Baltic Sea unaffected by eutrophication. For a Baltic Sea unaffected by hazardous substances and litter, the BSAP seeks to reduce concentrations of hazardous substances and the amount of marine litter so that biodiversity is not disturbed by pollution. All seafood should be safe to eat and litter should not cause any harm to marine life. Human activities at sea, such as shipping, fishing and construction, have an impact on the Baltic Sea and its biodiversity. The BSAP's objective of environmentally sustainable sea-based activities is intended to ensure that disturbance to the ecosystem is minimal. Shipping should be as safe and clean as possible, and underwater noise and alien species should be kept in check. In addition, the BSAP also addresses horizontal topics, including climate change, monitoring, maritime spatial planning, economic and social analysis, knowledge exchange and awareness raising, hotspots and financing. Since its initial adoption, the BSAP has resulted in a number of environmental improvements. More needs to be done and the full implementation of all actions by 2030, as specified in the plan, will certainly take us closer to our objective of a healthy Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is a life support system. If it thrives, so do we. In the BSAP, many of the agreed actions have deadlines much earlier than 2030, and implementation is already ongoing at full speed. Given that eutrophication continues to be the single most important pressure for the Baltic Sea, it is not surprising that the BSAP and HELCOM in general devote considerable attention to its mitigation. For example, the implementation of the Baltic Sea Regional Nutrient Recycling Strategy, adopted alongside the BSAP, was kickstarted with the support of new projects. The strategy has more weight than ever as the region strives to be more self-sustained and recycle more efficiently, for example, fertilizer raw materials such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Wastewater management is also a long-standing HELCOM area of activity and well covered by the current BSAP. The increasingly complex scenario of pressures which comprises subjects as varied as fisheries, submerged hazardous objects, eutrophication and pollution, including emerging threats from substances such as pharmaceuticals, litter and microplastics, are all addressed in HELCOM policies and dealt with by HELCOM working groups. HELCOM also contributes to continuing the essential monitoring and assessment of the Baltic Sea. Looking into the near future, in 2023, HELCOM's third holistic assessment of the Baltic Sea will also see the light of day. These periodic assessments are flagship products of our cooperation and provide regular updates on the environmental situation in the Baltic Sea. Each report captures a moment, a snapshot if you like, of the dynamic life history of the Baltic Sea. But each of these snapshots is key to the informed management and protection of our sea's environment. The forthcoming third report covers a broad range of aspects such as the state of the ecosystem, environmental pressures, and human well-being. And of course, I need to say a few words about climate change, the mega trend that will shape our future as well as that of generations to come. The effects of global warming are already evident in the Baltic Sea region, and in fact, the Baltic Sea is warming faster than the global average. In its climate change-related work, HELCOM focuses on long-term, multidisciplinary approaches. One key aim of HELCOM increasing the resilience of the ecosystem of the Baltic Sea will help the ecosystem survive times of change. And not just the ecosystem, but us as well. As we all know, the sea is a life support system, and for us to thrive, it must thrive. Looking on the bright side of things, it's worthy of notice that while HELCOM operates in one of the most polluted sea areas of the world, this is also one of the best researched seas. We have at our disposal long-term data and monitoring programs, some of which reach back over 100 years. Furthermore, 
while the Baltic Sea ecosystem began to deteriorate a long time ago, the implementation of cross-border environmental management to address those problems also commenced at an early point in time. In that respect, one can argue that the Baltic Sea could serve as a time machine to study the potential consequences of future challenges in other marine areas of the world, as well as promising mitigation measures. There is potential for lessons learned and fruitful exchange with other regions of the world on marine research, management, and policies. In addition to cooperation across countries and sectors, Robust scientific knowledge based on sound data is a hallmark and an essential basis of HELCOM policymaking. Those factors are equally significant when innovating and working towards better solutions in environmental engineering or any of the other disciplines represented at the Ecotech conference starting today. I believe that cooperation such as yours and the work of HELCOM can be mutually beneficial and reinforcing as we pursue our common objective of protecting the environment in the Baltic Sea region and globally. I wish you all an inspiring and fruitful conference. Thank you very much for your attention.